How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be creating this really cool, satisfying animation and it's really, really easy to set up. I'd say this is a great beginner tutorial. Uh, so we're gonna be using dynamic paint to create these really beautiful ruts and some simple shading and some very simple lighting. And when you're done, you're gonna have something really cool, about 120 frames long of just an awesome, satisfying, seamless loop motion graphics. That's what we're making today. So we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. Real Time Materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so when you're done, you're gonna have a really nice looking animation. Uh, and this is the project file you're gonna be walking away with. All you guys on Patreon, you have access to this right now. If you haven't heard of the Patreon, there's a lot of really cool stuff on there. It's kind of my hub for more ideas, kind of bonus stuff. You can check out that in the description. A lot of really cool exclusive content there. All right, let's go ahead and make this whole thing. So I'm in Blender 3.6, but this process works in like many, many older versions of Blender. This is not really a new process, uh, but let's go ahead and get in a plane, hit S5, and then I'm gonna hit Control A, apply that scale, and let's go ahead and get in a uh, mesh, icosphere, and then we're gonna do a couple subdivisions. For me, five is good. Now what I'm gonna do is get in a curve, a circle curve, and I click back on the icosphere. We're gonna go to our constraints, add constraint, and we're gonna go ahead and get in a follow path Select that Bezier circle, and then I'm gonna take him and scale him to my heart's desire. Right there looks good. I'm gonna um, apply that scale just in case it matters. It might not. Um, now let's go ahead and animate this. We're gonna go back to frame zero. Uh, we're gonna do 360 frames, but I promise we're not gonna be rendering 360 frames. We're actually only gonna be rendering 120 frames, but I will explain why later. What we need to do is here in the offset, I'm gonna go here to my edit, my preferences, and then make sure default interpolation in the animation tab is linear. It actually might not matter if it's busier, bezier, uh, specifically for this one. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the keyframe button, go all the way to frame 360 and type in 300. And what that's gonna do is each 100 is one rotation. So 300 is three rotations. We're doing three um, orbits, essentially. Now let's click on the keyframe button. And if we press play, you can see it working. Now we can set up our dynamic paint. So let's go here to the uh, physics tab and click on dynamic paint. We're gonna go ahead and keep it on canvas, add canvas. And then we're gonna go down here on surface type, we're gonna do displacement because we're gonna be displacing the ground with our sphere. Uh, right here on dissolve, that's really gonna be how when you make the rut, it kind of forms back to a flat plastic, uh, flat surface as it goes through, which really makes the materials look really beautiful. Keep it on slow and we're gonna do 200. Um, the less, the quicker, I think, yeah. Um, now we have this all set up to my knowledge. Now let's go ahead and click on the sphere and uh, we're gonna do another dynamic paint, but instead of canvas, we're going to do brush and then we're gonna add brush and um, it should be working. For some reason it's not, oh, and it's not working. That's because we didn't subdivide our plan. So let's click on our plan, right click, subdivide and do 100. This is the third time I've recorded this and I always make one mistake on the setup. All right, now you can see it is now displacing. Now, very, very imperative on this one to save as often as possible. Um, the, the dynamic paint kind of crashes relatively often, really only at bake, but sometimes it's weird. So now you can see it's working. But here's the problem with dynamic paint when you're making seamless animations, which is why we did 360 frames. Watch what happens. We're gonna be at, we're at the end of the timeline. We're gonna go back to the beginning. Watch what happens to the ruts, the dynamic paint that we make. They disappear. That presents a major problem if we're trying to make a seamless loop because frame one, or the beginning frame and the end frame have to look the same for it to be seamless because then you can just stack the video and you never know when it starts and stops. But with this, you can see when the video starts again. How do we fix that? 
So the way I figured out how to fix it without a bunch of malarkey and complications is having, you know, only rendering a subset of the frames. In this case, we're going to start at frame two. We're going to, we're going to start it out right over here at frame one, two, one. Really, it's a frame hundred. Really, it's frame 120, but there's a jump frame, so we have to delete it. So we're going to go forward one. Um, and then we're going to end at 240, giving us 120 frames. Remember, the ball is rotating three times. So from 0 to 120 is one rotation. From 120 to 240, another rotation, and another, another one after that. Which means that when we start here, there's going to be dynamic paint information at what's going to be perceivably frame one when we actually hit the render button. That's how we get around that problem. So what we're going to do now is uh, set up our composition, then we can bake it and see that it uh, loops seamlessly. That's awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm going to hit the tilde key and go to the top, and then let's go ahead and set up our whole composition. So I'm going to hit shift D right up here in the um, outliner. I'm going to click that new bezier circle that we made. I'm going to hit um, S, bring it here. So we have a nice little gap here for our rut. And then uh, I'm going to click on here, hit shift D, and we're going to hit R on that circle to bring it here. And on this guy, we're going to select these two guys, hit shift D, click on that bezier circle. And then I'm going to hit S and I want this circle right here to go right in between these two because it's a really satisfying look whenever they have this kind of hill that this one's crashing into and then flattening again. I found that to just be really nice to look at. So I'm going to add it in. And I'd recommend you do it if you want to copy my composition or literally do whatever arrangement of spheres you want to. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and save. I know I can get control S, but it's fine. Um, now let's go ahead and bake. Make sure you are baking 360 frames here on cache. We can bake. All right. So I didn't crash this time. Thank goodness. If it's going to crash, it's going to crash on bake. But now you can see we start the start frame has rigid, uh, not rigid body, has dynamic paint information. If we go to frame one, it's starting like that. But if we go to frame 121 where we're starting, so if I press play, and let's just go ahead and watch it. And once we get to the end of the, our timeline, it's seamless. And that's because the beginning frame and the end frame look exactly the same, except for that, you know, one frame jump, which is why we did 121. So there's no frame freeze. If you, if you, if you want to try it out, go to 120 and you'll see that one frame pause. That's what deletes it. All right, so now let's go ahead and make this look nice. So click on the plane. We're going to go to our modifiers. And actually, first off, if you want to, if your computer can handle it, I'm going to go hit tab, right click, and subdivide one more time. And I'm going to bake it again to get a much more smoother result. Um, or you can just stick with the 100. All right, so this is what it looks like if you subdivide this plane by 100 twice or 200. So now we have this really nice looking thing. I'm going to right click and shade smooth, go to your uh, modifiers tab, and we're going to go ahead and get a smooth modifier. And that's really going to help us. I'm actually going to hit the drop down here, turn on cavity um, so that it makes it look nice. All right. So we're going to bring that smooth up. Just notice how that really, notice how jagged it is. The smooth modifier is going to, I mean, do what it says, smooth it out. So it looks really squishy. And then if you want to go even further with it and go crazy, add in a subdivision surface, bring it back to one. And I'm going to hit this little uh, computer button. So it actually doesn't affect my viewport speed. It will only affect when I hit the render button. This is what we have now. I'm going to go ahead to the top, get my camera, control alt zero, snap that to view. And then in my camera settings over here, we're going to do 100 millimeters. That's really going to make it look nice and flat and cinematic and all that fun stuff. I'm going to hit G, middle click, and zoom all the way out for a nice composition. All right, now we have this. Let's go ahead and add our lighting. So Shift A, light, and we're going to do an area light. G, and I'm going to move it over with the uh, G button. I'm going to go ahead and use a disk. And I'm going to be rendering in cycles. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on cycles or turn on our render here. I'm going to hit R twice to point our light. And then we're going to do uh, 1500 on the light. So there we go. And then I'm going to scale it up quite a bit to look really nice. Boom. That's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and save. So now we have this so far, just really nice and satisfying and beautiful, but it really what's going to bring it to life is our materials. So let's click on the plane go to shading and let's add a new material. So we're, I'm going to be previewing our material in cycles just so it looks uh, looks nice and final. 
So I'm gonna click new. We have our principal BSDF. We're gonna go ahead and get a color ramp. So shift A, search, color ramp. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and flip the color ramp. And then this black one here, we're gonna to go to the RGB and slide over to red. Let's go ahead and get a layer weight. Plug facing into that. And then we're gonna bring our roughness all the way down. And then let's play with our blend on the layer weight till we get those red streaks that we're looking for. And you can make them as thick as you want. But there we go, now we have that. But now we want these uh, materials in the sphere to complement this uh, material that we just made on the ground um, and on the white portion. We're gonna give it a slight tint of green. That looks nice and mysterious. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight these, right click and copy. I'm gonna click one of these spheres, click new, right click and paste. We're gonna bring the roughness all the way down to zero and then plug that into base color and then bring that blend down. And I'm gonna turn off the gizmos. Bring, bring the blend down so that this layer weight makes a nice um, gradient from this ground into the sphere so they really work together and that's what makes it look really nice. I'm gonna click on all our spheres by holding shift, click, click, and then click this one last, control L or link materials. And now they're all gonna have the same material so when I press play, this is the beautiful animation that we now have and we're done, that's it. It's very simple to set up. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom, click on the camera icon on color management. We're gonna do high contrast. Um, and then here I'm gonna keep it at 300 samples on light paths, click and drag, one, turn off reflective and refractive caustics. And um, I'm gonna hit control S to save it. We can see now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit the render button, see how it looks, final render. So this is how our final render looks. It's awesome, it's weird. I love weird, and that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead up and set set it up to render. Feel free to do a PNG sequence if you'd like to do that. Uh, I know a lot of people have been commenting that they just wanna have a MP4 exported out. So if you wanna do that, we're gonna go ahead and go from PNG to FF MPEG video, encoding to MP4 and then output quality, perceptually lossless, render, render animation. When you're done, you're gonna have a really cool animation like mine you see here. So there it is. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned some really cool stuff. Feel free to check out Real Time Materials on my Patreon. It really helps support the channel, allows me to keep doing this all the time. Um, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next tutorial.